Welcome back. Welcome back to the Arise Bible Study and Fellowship. I am Pastor Stephen, and we are excited that you have joined us today. We have uh, been traveling through the book of Genesis, learning a lot about God's will in the earth. And if you've been following our videos, you know that we have been traveling to uncover the impact of sin in the world and God's will for fixing that in the earth. And uh, he prophesied that in the, in the book of Genesis, what he would do. Um, that he would send a woman through the woman, a seed through the woman that would fix all things. And we've been following that pathway ever since the Garden of Eden. And we're all the way up now to this point to Abraham having Isaac. And we're going to continue in our study today. Uh, but we want to go ahead and first open up with prayers. Uh, if you have your Bible, you can turn to Genesis chapter 24, because that's where we're going to be at. Uh, and we can go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you. We thank you. You're so worthy to be praised. We just thank you for waking us up today, giving us energy, for giving us focus to even get into your word. We thank you that you're calling us up higher. We hear your voice and we're answering your call. You said many are called, but few are chosen. We thank you that we are amongst the chosen, Lord, that you have called us for this time, that we have been born in this time period to do a work for your for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we, we thank you for our place in your will. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We don't, we don't focus on our problems. We focus on you. And we know that you are so much bigger than our problems. You are able to fix everything in our life. And even in the midst of our storms, even in the midst of the fires around us, Father, we just have peace in our hearts uh, that comes from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we thank you. We thank you for giving us a steadfast faith for renewing our joy each day. This is the day that you have made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Father, we thank you that the word that we studied today made you illuminate our hearts and minds, that we might understand clearly what you're saying through your word to us. And Father, that we might understand the context and the content of the Bible in a way that we've never seen it before. May you reveal yourself through your word and to our minds, Lord, may you make us understand your will for our life we thank you for practical application of your word as it pertains to each one of the people watching this video, those who are listening to the audio, all the members of the Arise family. Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so we are thankful that you have joined us again. Uh, this is the Arise Bible Study and Fellowship. And we um, have been studying deeply God's will. And we've gotten up to Abraham now. We studied actually yesterday. We'll do a recap on our last video. Our last session, we looked at why did God allow Abraham to be tested? Why did God allow Abraham to be tested? How would you feel if you were Abraham? Because God asked him to sacrifice his son. His son's name was Isaac. And we also looked at how would you feel if you were Isaac um, and had to go through that. Um, and then also we looked at who does God bless, which is very important. Of course, we always want to know how to get in alignment with God's will for our life and flow in the blessings he has for us. Um, we looked at God speaks through his chosen and his children. God speaks through his chosen and his children. And that's important because if you are God's child, you are his chosen and he will speak through you. And we also looked at God's will is done in the earth. God's will is done in the earth. And we know it's been that way ever since the beginning. God, Genesis 1, God um, created everything. So if it's his, he can create it. He did. He can do whatever he wants with it. And uh, his will is being done day by day, second by second. And we're watching this unfold, which one is one of the most beautiful experiences when you think about it, because we have the Bible. They didn't have the Bible back then. Uh, they had scrolls for different books, but we have the, the whole Bible, 66 books. Uh, and we're able to take a look at God's will in each chapter and see exactly how things were happening, what God had planned and how God bring, brought his will to pass through the lives of those mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. So that's what we looked at yesterday. And uh, so today, this is what we're going to look at. And you should write this down because this is what we're covering. And we always want you to take notes here on the Arise Bible Study. We don't want you to just listen. We want you to participate. So we want you to take notes and also write down anything that stands out to you today. Uh, of course, we do want to, um, you to share that. All right. So uh, today we're going to be looking at walking in faith. How to walk in faith. What does walking in faith look like? Trusting God's instructions and his leadings. Um, the blessings that are waiting for you. And we're talking about day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year of the rest of your life. 
the blessings that are laid out before you. Um, we also want to look at giving gifts and being a blessing uh, to which we've been called. Uh, this life is not, is not all about us. You know, this is this is our, we live our life to be a blessing, be the blessing that you want others to be to you. Uh, so make sure that you have a heart that's open to give gifts and be a blessing. We want to be watchful, prayerful, and use wisdom. And we're going to look at that, being watchful, prayerful, and using wisdom. And then also the power of discernment, the power of discernment. Now, for those of you who don't know those kind of words, discernment basically is understanding the situation and being able to see clearly what you're dealing with, right? It's not just going into a situation and not knowing where I am, you know, who am I talking to? What is the subject about? Always ask questions. Don't uh, don't allow persuasive people to uh, to make you compromise your morals and your values. Basically, this is what that comes down to. All right, so we're going to be in Genesis chapter uh, 24. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 24, and we're going to be looking at what does it mean to walk in God's will. Right now, the servant of God, uh, and, and we talked about this, Abraham has a servant, and uh, and this is uh, in Genesis chapter 4. I'll go ahead and bring it up. Uh, and so Abraham, Abraham's servant has a job that's been given to him, uh, which is to go out to find his son a wife. That's 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 the job, to go out and find Isaac a wife. And the servant is now on his way to do that. And he's taking a bunch of camels with a lot of gifts, and he's going back to Abraham's home to do just that. We're going to pick it up in Genesis chapter 24, verse 11. And uh, it says, and he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of the evening, the time when women go out to draw water. Now, when he's just now arrived at the city that Abraham came from, where his relatives are at, and he's been told to go find a woman from the from his relatives to bring back to Isaac, his son, to marry. Uh, and so this we we're picking up here on verse 12. And he said, oh, Lord God of my master, Abraham, please grant me success today. And show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Now, this is something I want you to see right here. How often do we do this? How often do we actually speak blessings on our day and ask God to bless our day and thank God for blessing our day, right? So this is, again, where we look at practical application. We see how people are interacting with God. He's our father. We call him Abba. He's not just God. We call him Abba because we're close in like daddy. Right. So we're close in. And so we can talk to him like that. We can we, in the morning. We just ask God to bless us, bless everything that we have. I'll make our day prosperous and show steadfast love to my master, Abraham. Right. So don't just pray for yourself, pray for others. Very important. And so this is the fact that we see here in the scripture. And we always want to take our time to slow down and look at the facts. What are we? This, there's a lot in here, but this is the point. You must get in alignment with the word that was spoken over you. I'll say it again. You must get in alignment with the word that was spoken over you. Now, Abraham spoke this word over his servant and said, I want you to go. I want you to go back to the people where I came from. I want you to go amongst my kinsmen. I want you to find a righteous, holy daughter, right? A godly daughter to bring back to my son to marry. And the servant was really nervous about that. Like, wow, that's, that's a heavy responsibility. And he had some doubts and some concerns. But he went and he went and now he's in alignment. You can see by his prayer, he's in alignment because he said what he's saying is, I can't do this unless you do it for me. This is not something I can do. This is something that you can do. And that's why he said, oh, Lord, God of my master, Abraham, please grant me success today. That's beautiful. Put it before the Lord. It's petition. It's supplication. Right. And show steadfast love to my master, Abraham. So he submitted that before the Lord in prayer. And, um, and so we see that getting in alignment with God's word that has been spoken over you is the best position for your heart on a daily basis. No matter what's coming your way, you can get a word today. And between today and two months from now, things happen. You can forget all about the word that was spoken over you. So you got to keep that word before you daily in prayer, keeping it refreshed so that you can know where you're going and who's taking you there. All right, let's keep going. Verse 13. Behold, I am. Oops, let me. Don't y'all look ahead. I see you peeking. Where's my, I gotta, I gotta make it disappear. Boom, there you go. All right, verse 13. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now this is the servant still talking to God. Look what he does. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, please let down your jar that I may drink and who shall say drink and I will water your camels. Let her be the one 
whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. All right, let's dig a little deeper. Let's look at the fact. The servant, the servant, that should be servant. The servant overcame his fear by speaking to God in faith. The servant overcame his fear by speaking to God in faith. Not doubt. He was very specific in his prayer. And if you look at the way he did this, I mean, he lined it up nicely. He was like, you know what? I got to figure out out of all these women that are coming out of the city to get water, which one is the one? And he's praying to God. And he says, you know, I'm standing by the spring of water. The daughters of the men in the city are coming out to draw. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, please let down your jar that I may drink. And who shall say drink and I will water your camels. Let her be the one. So he's like, look, I'm going to speak to her. And if she's the one. She is going to respond correctly, and I'm going to know that it's she's the one. All right, so let's let's keep going. So before he had this is verse 15, before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebecca was born to Bethel, the son of, of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. Let me read that again. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebecca, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, Abraham's brother, I mean, look at this, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. Let's look at the fact. What is the fact? The fact is God answered his prayer as he was speaking. God answered his prayer as he was speaking. Now, this is my question for you, because we don't want to breeze past this. How is that possible? How is that possible that this man just came from so far? He just got to the city. He just got his camel settled. He just prayed this prayer. And before he could finish praying, here she comes, Rebecca, with the water jar on her shoulder, who is, look at this, uh, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. I mean, this is this is the kind of thing that when you are walking in faith, when you are trusting God with your next steps, these are what I, what I call divine appointments. These are you walking in sync with the spirit. The Bible says if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the whole time the servant was coming towards the city, his heart was lining up with God's will. And he began to walk in the spirit to the point where his confession of faith and his prayer lined up with God's will that was being done in the very moment. And some of you who have been walking with the Lord may have may experience things like this, where God manifests his will so quickly that you're just like, man, nobody can tell me that God's not God because he's proven himself to me. He's shown up. I know my God is real because he has shown up. We don't serve idols made by man's hands, made of wood and metal. We don't serve uh, uh, idols. We serve a true and living God that proves himself not only in the scripture, but in our life. And so this pattern, and I want you to see this. The man of God who was the prophet spoke a word over him. The servant got in alignment with the word that was spoken and went, right? And went. And when he got there, the very time and the hour he got there, God was manifesting the will of Abraham who spoke, which was God's will. So God's will is being done on the earth and is being done to those who are obedient, who are walking according to his will and his word, despite how you feel. It's not about how you feel. It's not about your fears. Is that about your concerns about what you see? Because the just shall not live by sight, but by faith. They shall live by faith and not sight. And that's the important thing that we have to hear. That despite how the world looks and what they say about you in this world, oh, we can't do that. You can't do that. Our policy and, and companies you work with, well, yeah, that's not in our policy. That doesn't matter because God's favor is not fair. God will move mountains to bring his will to pass. And he has. And he will. And so we, we're thankful that we are his children. And this is the scripture that reinforces that and that we need to have a scripture to stand on is Matthew 6, 7, and 8. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that, that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Look at that. He says, when you pray, don't pray long, repetitive prayers. That's not going to impress God. It doesn't impress God. What impresses God is words spoken in faith from a genuine, pure heart. And when you when you believe what you're saying out of your mouth, when your mind 
connects with your heart and they're in alignment with your spirit and you speak that to God, that's in faith. Because you're saying God is God. I mean, think about it. There's nothing impossible for our God to do for you in your life. That's his will, right? That's in his will. His will will be done. You just have to line up with it and know this before you even think to ask it. He already knows. This is look at this verse eight. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need. Look at that before you ask him. So don't ever doubt that God doesn't know your situation, that I don't know why he hasn't answered me. Look, God already knows. And if he hasn't answered you, it's because it's not time. And wherever you are and you find yourself, be content in the moment. Be at peace. No matter where you are, no matter what situation, say that this, and this is something that's helped me tremendously in the last two years, that everything is okay. No matter what situation you're in, in the moment, in the moment of any kind of mounting anger or frustration, everything's okay. Why? Because God has allowed that to happen in your life. And if God has allowed it, it has a purpose. And so don't fight against the thing. Look at it and stand back from it and go, you know what? Everything's okay. You will learn to take self-control. You will learn to have self-control when you do that because your emotions will disengage from you. And I actually had, to have, had this happen yesterday. I was on the phone with the business and they didn't give me the answer I wanted. I'm just going to be honest with you. They did not give me the answer I wanted. And when a young lady spoke and she's just doing her job, this company has policies. But when she said her answer, I just I stopped talking. I stopped talking. I'm telling you, we were silent for about 20 seconds because she she said something. She was actually waiting for a response from me. And I did not like that answer because it hurt. It was something that challenged me. And I said to myself, I was like, OK, I had to think quick because this is her job. She's just doing her job. So I'm not going to blast her because that's not love. We got to walk in love. And I checked in with God. I checked in with the Holy Spirit. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to press in right here because I'm a child of the king? Am I supposed to, with the authority that has been given me, speak the things that I desire? Or am I supposed to be at peace and show love because I'm a child of the king and God's called me to be that today? And the Holy Spirit told me, let it go. You told me just to flow with that. And I did. And we got off the phone and it was peaceful. And this is the point. When you're in the middle of your testing, when you're in the middle of watching God's will be done in your life, you do not want to get in the way. As a matter of fact, there's a sermon I'm going to do called Get Your Butt Out of the Way. Do not, in the midst of your search situation, go, okay, this is not going the direction I wanted to go. So, uh, uh, but I'm going to change this. This is, you know, and you start jumping in to do your own will. And that's what we're going to see in these stories as we're going through watching the lives of each one of these people uh, as we're studying. We're going to see how some flow with God and some decided to do their own will. It was like, but God, I don't like that. I'm going to change and I'm going to do. And we're going to see what happens because of that. And so let's keep going. We just finished in verse eight. All right. So let's go to uh, we're going to jump down to verse 16. Uh, the young woman was very attractive in appearance, uh, a maiden whom uh, no man had known. So she's a virgin. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Uh, then the servant ran to meet her and said, please give me a little water to drink. Uh, a little water to drink from your jar. And she said, drink, my Lord. And she quickly let down her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. And this is the fact. Faith without works is dead. He ran down to meet her. He didn't sit back. He wasn't waiting to see. Let me see what God's going to do. I already prayed. So let's see what God's going to do. He said, no. She came down. She walked down to the water. He saw her. He was like, you know what? I'm going to go and do my part. You have a part to do with your faith. And then, of course, you got to understand this. Faith, your belief in God's ability to do his will in your life. Faith is not faith until it's tested. So when you're believing God for something, it doesn't mean you just sit back and believe. You still got some work to do. When God's called you to move, you got to move. And that's one thing the servant servant is demonstrating throughout this whole part this in Genesis chapter 24, is that when he's told to move, he goes. When, he when God tells him to move, he does. And because of that, God's will is being done in his life. So faith without works is dead, which means it cannot fulfill itself. It cannot come to pass because you haven't done your part. Right? There's God's part, and then there's your part. You do what's natural, and God will put his super on it, and then it'll be supernatural. That's the way I was taught, and it's the truth. All right, let's go to verse 19. When she finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Now, you know, camels can drink a lot of water. He had like 10 of them. So that girl was working. Uh, verse 20. So she quickly emptied her jar into, in, into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water. And she drew for all his camels. 
I, I just got to stop right there. Let me just stop right there. Look, daughters of the king, let me just say this to you. Time and time again, we see how because of the diligence of your heart, because of your work ethic, God sees you and, and promotes you. So don't be weary in well-doing. The Bible says you will prosper if you faint not. And this girl right here, Rebecca, is straight working. Nobody's helping her. She's filling up this whole trough, not for a camel, which I don't know how many, how much water they can put in one of those humps, but there was 10 of them. And she filled it up and they got to drink too. So just know that your work is not in vain. God sees that and he will reward you. He will reward you. All right. So verse 21, the man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had promised her promise his journey or not. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. This right here is discernment. He didn't just say, when I went to her and asked for water, she gave it to me and she's wearing my camels. She must be the one. He sat back and he checked in. He was like, wait a minute, let me watch. That's discernment. He took time to seek the Lord for just further confirmation. Verse 22, when the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing a half shekel uh, and two bracelets for her arms weighing 10 gold shekels and said, please tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? Now, you know, you know, the servant had to be excited because that's why he came. He came into the city to find her. So, you know, he's like, man, this is the one, the first girl I come up to, the first beautiful woman, because it already said that she was good looking. Right. It already said that she was she was pretty. So he's like, OK, so my master's son's going to love her because she's beautiful and she's a worker. So she definitely can come into our family and she can do what she needs to do in the family. So and she's a giver. You know, what? she was demonstrating so, so much of Christ, the character of Christ. Verse 24, she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. That's where that's what Abraham said. She added, we have plenty of both straw and fodder and room to spend the night. And the man bowed his head and worshiped the L-O-R-D, the Lord. That's God Almighty, Jehovah, man. And if when you get your blessings, you better praise the Lord. And said, blessed be the Lord. That's a Baruch Atah Adonai in Hebrew. The God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness toward my master. As for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's kinsmen. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. So we see that everything lined up. The servant came in. The servant saw Rebecca. Rebecca's related to Abraham, and they have room at their house, and she's the right girl. This is all perfect, but it says the young woman ran and told her mother's household, her mother's household. That's what caught me when I read that. I was like, mother's household, because usually it's the father that they have to go talk to, but apparently her father was dead at this time, because he's not in the story, but she does have an older brother who we're going to meet. All right, verse 29, Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban. Do not, do not forget that name. Do not forget the name Laban. Matter of fact, I'm going I'm to go ahead and highlight that. Laban, Laban, Laban. I want y'all to do not forget that name. It's going to show up somewhere else. Laban ran out toward the man to the spring. So his sister comes home, all right? He sent her out to go get water for everybody at the house, right? And because when the father's dead, the oldest brother now is in charge. So she went out to go get water. Not that he sent her because I'm sure it wasn't like that. So she knew what she needed to do. She went out to go get the water. When she got home, she had on all this gold. She had on rings. And she was smiling. And so her brother's at the house like, hey, you went to go get water. You come back rich. Like what happened? Right. He, she tells the whole story. Verse 30. As soon as he saw the ring and the braces on his sister's arms and heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, thus the man spoke to me. He went to the man like he with the quickness he left. And behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. Now, you can imagine Laban coming up to this man. He sees him from afar. This man is standing there, not with a camel with gifts on it, but 10 camels with gifts on it and servants. So, I mean, that had to be just an amazing sight to see. Um, and thus the man spoke to me, right, verse 31. And he said, come in, oh, blessed of the Lord. Look how he's calling him out. He's like, you know what? I know who you are. You're blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. Laban is just so given. That's awesome. He's invited him home. Verse 32. So the man came to the house and unharnessed the camels and gave straw and fodder to the camels. And there was water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Then food was set before before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say. He said, speak on. 
Now look at look at Laban. Laban's heart's the same way. Come on in. He he got the he got the camel settled. He fed them. He got water for their feet because you know when back then they didn't have clothes shoes. They had sandals, and as they walked, the feet got dirty. So you know when you come into a house, you're supposed to clean your feet, right? So um, so anyway, Laban set all that up. So Laban Laban's flowing in the same spirit. Verse thirty four. So he said, "I am Abraham's servant." This is the servant speaking. The Lord has greatly blessed my master. And he has become great. Now, let me stop right here because we, we, we'll just breeze on past that. I'm going to highlight that. Why? Because God told Abraham, his name was Abram at the time, to leave a city called Uz to go to the place where he would show him to go. So Abraham didn't even know Abram at the time, didn't know where he was going. But because of Abram's obedience at the time, he became Abraham, the father of faith. And that journey that we just studied over the last probably three, three weeks or so, that journey that he took is what qualified him to be able to be spoken of in this way. It is in your obedience now that will allow you to be who you need to be in the future so that God can bless you and through you bless others. Let me say that again. It's your obedience today and tomorrow and every day that will allow you to end up in the place in the future where God needs you to be to be the blessing to others. What does that mean? That means that others, other people on this planet, their life is tied, tied to your obedience. There are people on this planet that are waiting for you to become who God needs you to be so that they can become who God needs them to be. And that's what's happening here. And God even told him, he said, through you, the nation shall be blessed. And it's the same for us. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are joint heirs with Christ, ambassadors of heaven. We are called here on this earth. This is not our home. We are called here on this earth to make holy impact in this world for God's glory and to show forth his love to a hurting world. That's why we're here. And every day, just like we do here on the Rise Bible Study and Fellowship, we study so that we can know God's word and we can do his will in the earth. And so we know we're called to be a blessing. And that's what we want to do. We want to walk in that. And so that one day we'll say the Lord has greatly blessed you and has become great in your life and you have become great in the world. All right. We're going to keep reading. And, and, and most of the people who are already here watching the Rise Bible Study, most of our Rise family already flows in this. You guys already are blessed. You have been blessing people for years. Just keep doing it. And let's encourage others to do the same thing. He has given him flocks and herds. So, you know what? I'm stopped because I just got to check my spirit. I told my wife, I said, you know what? We were dealing with some situations. Um, and I told Jill, I said, you know what? We're going to give our way out of our trouble. We're going to sow seeds and watch God multiply those seeds to get us to a better place. And sure enough, that happened. So I just want to encourage you that, you know, we have time, talent, and treasure. There's three things we can give. We can give time, we can give our talents, right? Our skills, right? And our treasure. So you don't always have to give money. A lot of times people just think it's money, but it's not. Sometimes it's just care. Sometimes it's just a listening ear or your presence in the room, right? So it's important that we look at how do we give our time, talent, and treasure to the Lord as we walk this thing out. All right, I'm gonna keep reading. He has given his flocks and herds, he has he has given him, talking about God's given Abraham flocks and herds, silver and gold, male servants and female servants, camels and donkeys. Wow. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and to him he has given all that he has. He's saying, your sister is about to marry the one that has everything, that's going to inherit everything my master now has. Verse 37, my master made me swear, saying, you shall not take a wife. For my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, evil people, in whose land I dwell, but you shall go to my father's house and to my clan and take a wife for my son. I said to my, my master, perhaps the woman will not follow me. And he's telling him the whole story. But he said to me, the Lord, before whom I have walked, will send his angel with you and prosper your way. So the angel set all this up. You shall take a wife for my son, for my clan, and from my father's house. Then you will be free from my oath. When you come to my clan, and if they will not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. So Abraham was always kind and loving. He was just saying, look, you flow in God's will. And if you do your part, don't worry about the outcomes. You're going to be good with me. You'll be all right. God's called us to do our part. Don't worry about other people. You just do your part. Verse 42, I came today to the spring and said, oh, Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, if now you are prospering the way that I go, behold, I am standing by the spring of the water. Let the virgin who comes out to draw water to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink. And who shall say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also 
Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, see, this is on the inside. Behold, Rebecca came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. I said to her, please let, let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will give your camel's drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camel's drink also. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom milk bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Look at that. She just got blessed. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to take the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you are going to show steadfast love and faithfulness to my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Look, if there's any question why, why Abraham chose that servant, it was right here. These verses right here from 42 all the way down to 49 tells you why he was chosen. That brother is thorough. Do you hear me? He 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 outlined that whole thing because he needs everyone, everything to be clear. This is why I'm here. This is what God said. This is what, what the man of God said to me. This is what I did. This is what she did. I mean, he he outlined the whole thing. Why is that important? Because God has a plan, and we've been talking about this for weeks. God has a plan, and as long as you walk and live according to his plan, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. We may have dry seasons. We may be going through valley times, but guess what? It's always darkest before the sun comes up. And so we know that weeping, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And so this servant had a struggle at the beginning of this journey, but he locked and loaded. And he was like, you know what? My master believes in me, and I believe in his God, and his God is going to work this out. Plus, Abraham told him, the angel of God is going to go before you and prepare your way. And we see right here, and now he's saying it. And the angel of the Lord prospered me on my way. God did that. That's that's the testimony part. And so when we get to a place where God is blessing us, we have to testify. Do not hold it in. Share it. Tell someone what God has done in your life. Why? Because God blessed you to be a blessing. And certainly telling people that God is still alive, that God is still moving, and that God is still blessing, encourages other people and restores hope in them. And that's part of why we're here. All right, let's see what happens with Laban. Verse 50, then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing has come from the Lord. We cannot speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebecca is before you. Look what he says, take her and go and let her be the wife of your master's son as the Lord has spoken. Man, that's beautiful. Laban is just flowing in God's will. He's saying, go ahead and take her and go. Let's see what happens. Verse 52, when Abraham's servant heard the words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord. What do you guys notice? about the servant every time he's blessed. What does he do? He worships God. God is looking for those who, are worship, who will worship him in spirit and truth. Verse 53, and the servant brought out jewelry of silver and gold and gar man, I'm highlighting this. Let me just highlight that right there. This is what we be talking about. And the servant brought out jewelry of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave to her brother and to her mother costly ornaments. Wow. When you flow in God's will, the, the overflow blesses those around you. Let me say it again. When you flow in God's will, the overflow blesses those around you and those that are attached to you. That's why you have to be careful who you associate with, good or bad. Because if they are flowing in God's will, their blessings will be your blessings. But if they're not, their sin will overflow into your life and that stress and pain will be in your life. Now, there's a season for that, you know, because the Bible says that a brother is born for adversity. The sister is born for the same purpose. So it doesn't mean that because you have people around you that's going through challenges that you should dis disassociate. But you need to discern whether God wants you to be in their life in that season. And if so, there'll be a work for you to do prayer, you know, and to be there to help support them and all that. But I'm talking about people who are evil, evil people who always have destruction happening around them. Be very careful about that. And the other thing is make sure. And this is why people need to go to churches. And well, we call them churches, but people need to go to the buildings where the body of Christ meets. I don't like calling the church because we are the church. Right. So that's my personal. You know, that's it's not even my person. That's a fact, because God no longer dwells in buildings made by man's hands, but he dwells in the hearts of men. So we go to where the ministry is at. Right. The, the meeting place. And then. Um, but it's important because that's where you build community and we need each other. And you won't have community unless you get out of your house. You know, a lot of people, I saw this with people in my family, they would go to work, they would come home every day to go to work, come home, 
but they ne never had a community to connect to. And so they're really isolated and they had to suffer alone. Don't do that. Make sure that you find a good Bible teaching church um, and that you connect with the body of Christ and get into a small group and uh, which is a little Bible study group and, and have some fun. I mean, it's not just about reading the Bible, going to uh, to us, you know, to church and then and then going home. You got to start connecting with people, too. Uh, so you can have fellowship. But we see here because they're related to her, they're being blessed. And certainly people who are related to you have been blessed and you've been blessed by the people that you've been related to. And that's the way it works. Verse 54, and he and the, and the men who were with him ate and drank, and they spent the night there. Uh, when they arose in the morning, he said, send me away to my master. Now, let's go back here. Verse 51, behold, Rebecca is before you. This is Laban speaking. Bef behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her and go. So they spent the night. That's what we're seeing. They spent the night. All right. Verse 55, this is Laban. Her brother and her mother said, let the young woman remain with us a while, at least 10 days after that she may go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold up. We've been flowing through this whole thing with no problem. Now, all of a sudden, you go to sleep and you didn't change your mind. You just, now she can't go with us. She got to stay for 10 days. That's like two weeks. She has to stay for two weeks after we've been giving you all all these gifts and blessed her. Now you're going to switch up. That's why you have to use discernment. It's important because at your point of your greatest victory, that's when trouble comes in. If you're not on guard, it's going to knock you sideways. Stay on guard. Stay watchful and prayerful. Now let's see what happens. Verse 54. And, and he and the men who were with him ate and drank, and they spent the night there, right? When they arose in the morning, he said, send me on. And he, he, he didn't just take her and leave. Send me away to my master. Um, verse 55, her brother and her mother said, and of course, you know, Laban talked to the mom. You know, she should probably stay here for a couple of weeks before we let her go. Let the young woman remain with us while uh, a while, at least 10 days after, the, after she may go. Verse 56, but he said to them, do not delay me since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. Verse 57. And then they said, well, let us call the young woman and ask her. And they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent away Rebecca, the sis their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her. Oh, sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands, and may your offsprings possess the gate of those who hate him. That's a great prayer. Verse 61, then Rebecca and her young woman arose and rolled on the camels and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebecca and went his way. There we go. There we go. So everything's worked out. The servant has found Rebecca. Rebecca has gotten permission from her family to leave. Everybody's been blessed. It's all good. But do not forget the name Laban. I will, he will re-enter this story later on because he wanted them to stay. And partly of why he wanted him to stay is because he wanted some of the stuff that was on those camels, right? Because you saw how she got all the gold and all that stuff, but they got they got clothes. They didn't get the gold, right? So, you know, he wanted them to stay so he could try to figure out how to get some of that stuff from them. That's in his nature, but we're going to see that later on. Um, but, um, but anyway, so we're going to start right here and then we're going to pick up tomorrow uh, on her actually meeting Isaac. Uh, because Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac is the one that the servant went to find um, uh, Rebecca for. And Rebecca, beautiful, hardworking, godly, peaceful, anointed woman. Uh, and then, and did you see how quick she responded? She had no doubt in her mind that she was leaving. And sometimes you got to be like that. Sometimes, no matter where you are, you might be working for a company or at a at a uh, at a church or something like that. When God calls you to move. It's, it's a confirmation to you. You know it's your time. And, and the people around you may be shocked that you move with such um, so quickly, but it's time to go. Uh, and so you got to be ready. You got to have discernment. And that's why you got to be prayerful, because as God is moving you through this life, he's moving you to something. He's moving you to something. And if you're believing him for better, then when it comes, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. And sometimes he'll give you a holy dissatisfaction. You need to write that down. A holy dissatisfaction for where you are. Why? Because he's about to give you a new thing and he needs you to be ready for that. Um, and in the story, we also see how as you walk in faith day by day, because it took them time to get there. God is preparing the way he sent his angel before uh, the servant preparing the way. And so even the day Rebecca woke up, she didn't know that she was about to be in alignment with God's will and be a descendant of Christ. This is the thing. 
She had no clue that she was called and chosen for that purpose. And the very day she woke up, the day she washed up, got dressing and decided, you know, it's, it's, we're about to get to noonday. Let me go get some water. She had no, she was doing what she was always doing. She was being diligent and faithful and she walked right into God's will. And when she got there, her attitude was right. And that's something that I have, you know, I have to really, uh, I really want to impress it upon you guys. Every day we got to have the right attitude because you don't want to be in the right place with the wrong attitude. Oh my goodness. You do not want to be in the place where God desires you to be. And you have the wrong attitude, the wrong heart, and you say the wrong thing and you do the wrong thing. Because this, this whole story could have went a whole different direction. She could have been hot. She could have been mad. She could have went and got that water. And I'm going to tell you something. Water's heavy. I don't know if you ever carried a 24 case of water. Oh, that's that's heavy. And she had a whole jar of water and she put that thing on her shoulder. And those women back there weren't built for it tough. You know, they weren't all, they, she probably was a very um, skinny person. She probably wasn't heavy set. And she has this water on her on her shoulder. And this man standing by 10 camels talking about, can I get a drink of water? She's like, you know that? The well's right there. Why are you asking me for the water I just drew? Right? She could have had the wrong attitude. And then after that, she saw those camels. She could be like, I'm not helping. Here, you can get you a couple sips, but I ain't, I got to go. I got to get back to the house. Right? We got to be careful the whole time as we're walking to live in today according to God's will. That's what I'm getting in my spirit. That, that today, let's not let it be about us. Let's, let's not say this is, let me get in my day. I got to go to work. I got to go do this. I gotta, no, let's walk with the Lord today, hand in hand and talk to him. Let's, let's know that as God is guiding us uh, in our day, he's guiding us toward his purpose for our life. So let's stop right there and uh, let's open up for comments um, and questions or anything that stood out to you guys. Feel free to unmute yourself, unmute yourself and, uh, and share. This usually, for those who listen by audio, this usually is the point where in my mind I'm thinking, you know, I feel like a substitute teacher. Like, I'm just going to call on people. All right. So, Loretta, go ahead. Good morning. Sorry, Good morning. I missed the last two sessions. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, one thing that is interesting is how Abraham's story, where God called him out of this familiar land, as Abram and said, go come out of your native country, come out of what's familiar to you, I'll take you somewhere. And now here we see Eliezer coming to talk about Abraham in his, in his um, position of fulfillment of God's promise for his life. So I think that also resonates or resonated with Rebecca and the family, whereby when he was talking about Abraham, that connection with this is the person who was with us. He trusted God. He believed God. And, and so for us, when we read the story, let's also consider that component, the faith component, the trusting of God component. And like you're saying, obedience to the call and purposes of God. We, would, we wouldn't know how it will play out. But just reading the story again, Eliezer came to talk to them about Abraham, not Abram. He came to talk to them about the family member who trusted the unknown God, but he came to say, now you are going to be a part of that covenant with that God, God of my master, Abraham. And that is very profound for me. I don't know about you, but it's very fulfilling to know that when we trust God, in the moments of uncertainty, it will play out and all the pieces will fall into place eventually. Only believe. That is so true. That, that is good. It is true and it is good. And and uh, and she mentioned Eleazar. That is, uh, he was the chief servant of Abraham. And uh, so that's the one that um, that did this. And, and it's right. We have to know that faith is the chief component. This is This is the very thing we need. Uh, because it helps us see beyond what we see. There's a, when I do business coaching, that's one thing I teach my clients is that there's a difference between sight and vision. Sight only sees what's in front of it, and vision sees way beyond that, which gives you hope and gives you direction for your life. All right. So, uh, all right. Who's next? Who has something else they want to share? If there's something that stood out to them today. Or let me just say, who 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 wants to pass this class? Because I'm giving an F to everybody who does not speak today. All right, let me stop playing. All right, so, um, okay, Telly. 
<clears throat> yes. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, so there were several things, but um, I, I want to start with uh, one thing that you mentioned, Pastor Stephen, about like Rebecca and her work ethic. I, again, I've read Genesis several times and I feel like I didn't pay attention, but you're right. Campbell drank a lot of water and it was 10. Like, Telly, did we lose you? Oh, I think we, we lost Telly. She was talking about the water that Camel drinks. Telly, if you, can you hear me? Oh, we had, I don't know if her earpiece went out. And, and Telly, if you can hear me, we, we can't hear you right now. So we're going to, um, <laughs> I see, look, Telly's coming back. <laughs> All right, so we're going to bring her back in on a different device, it looks like. That's right. Look, here on the Rise Bible Study and Fellowship, we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper until he's fighting for it. She she logged in on a different different instrument. What you got? Hey, Telly. Man, okay, because the devil was really trying to <laughs> start to pull out the tambourine. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, her, her work ethic, I was immediately reminded of, I know this is further on in the Bible, but like a Proverbs 31 woman mm. and the many facets of that. And, I mean, some serious and also, I'm talking about Genesis 6, 8, when um, it, it says the father knows what you need before mm. you act. And so I just think of the sovereignty of God. And yesterday I was reading um, out of this daily devotion my friend got me about 100 names of God. And the first one that I read was Elohim. Ooh. And in um, supreme God. And the, the correlation between the two, like God already knows, but he wants you to humble your heart and ask him. And I'm just so blessed by that. So those are the things I wanted to share. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. You know, something that I want you to keep in mind is that um, if a gallon of water, if you held a gallon of water, okay, think about this. If you held a gallon of water in both hands, how long would you be able to hold it up in the air? A gallon of water. You probably could do a couple minutes before your hands start shaking. If it was an hour, your arms would just turn to jelly, right? Check this out. I just checked this while Telly was talking. A camel can drink 30 gallons of water in one sitting. Mm -hmm. 30 gallons. And she had 10 camels. That's 300 gallons of water she carried from the well to the trough to feed those camels. And you tell me she didn't earn that gold that was put on her. That's that's for real. That's a real thing. All right, Telly, thank you for sharing that. All right, does anybody ha have anything else before we move on to our inspiration? Now, if you're going through something, I just sense this, if you're going through something, if you're in the midst of a trial, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. This is a season where even in your stillness, you can have faith. If you are in a place where you, you just don't know what to do, just do your best where you are. Turn on gospel music, Christian music, and praise the Lord. You know, you can go to BibleGateway.com. You can pull up a chapter in the, in the Bible and hit that little speaker, and it'll read you the Bible 24 hours a day, nonstop. And there's another website called Soaking.net. I want to encourage you guys, if you're, if you're in a tight season, you need to surround yourself with God's word. You need to set the atmosphere. I'm hearing that in my spirit. You need to set the atmosphere for praise to get your mind off your problem and your mind stayed on God so he can keep you in perfect peace. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move to our daily inspiration. So Evelyn, feel free to turn on your camera and uh, and unmute yourself. And um, and we are going to get into our inspiration. We always get a daily inspiration from, uh, from uh, Evelyn Booker. She is our church mother, as I say. I'm going to turn over to Evelyn Booker. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. To God be the glory. Today is March 15th. And it says, listen to the love song that I am continually singing to you. I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. The voices of the world are a cacophony of chaos pulling you this way and that. Don't listen to those voices. Challenge them with my word. Learn to take many breaks from the world, finding a place to be still in my presence and listen to my voice. There is immense hidden treasure to be found through listening to me. 
though I pour out blessings upon you always, some of my richest blessings have to be actively sought. I love to reveal myself to you and your seeking heart opens up to receive more of my disclosure. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. That's Matthew 7 and 7. Mm, praise God. That's so packed full of information. Oh my God. Seek, knock, and ask. And matter of fact, someone said, seek and keep seeking, knock and keep knocking, ask and keep asking until you get what it is you want. Don't just one time and think that's it. No, you got to. This is active faith. And uh, and so that's definitely inspiration. But the other thing, uh, Evelyn, when you when you talked about a cacophony, when I heard that word cacophony, I was like, what is that? That's like a symphony of chaos. Yes. Uh, and it made me think about being in a big city. If you're in a big city, you got cars zipping by, people beeping horns, folk talking. You got all these noises around you. And it's, and it's the ability to be in the midst of that, but hearing peacefulness and harmony in God. And that's the that's the thing. Have you ever been in an environment where it seems like no matter what's happening around you, you're detached from it. Like you're not caught up in the chaos that you are operating with such peace and harmony flowing in God's spirit. That's what he's saying, because he he is ever present in every situation and he's always providing for us. And and so has that ever happened in your life? Evelyn, have, has that ever uh, have you seen that as, as true in your life is a better question. Oh, yes. All the time. Yeah, and, and when we and, have, and I was, I was thinking when you were talking about attitude. I know your time is about up, but um, one of the ten ingredients to ensure success is your attitude. And it says the remarkable thing is that we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string that we have, and that string is attitude. I am convinced that my life is 10% what happens and 90% how I react to it. And so Goodness. it is with you, it's your attitude. And you said, and that's the 10 what again? I give the 10 ingredients to ensure success, the first being keeping God center and first, and this is the 10th one. And so what, where is that, where did you pull that from? From my book. Oh, you have a book? Let me see. Boom. There you go, people. Make sure you get this book. A winner in spite of it is on Amazon. Make sure you reach out to Evan. Let her know what you think about it. It is actually taken off all over. Being put in colleges, taught in classes. I mean, definitely get this book. It's called A Winner in Spite of by Evelyn Smith Booker. So make sure you get that on Amazon. Praise God. Yes. Praise the Lord. And we thank God for you. You are a blessing. Uh, and we thank God for you watching the video today. We thank you. We we're thankful that you tuned in today and joined us. And we want you to join back with us tomorrow as we continue our study in Genesis, as we continue watching what God does and bringing his will to pass in the earth through his children, which we are. We are his children. And uh, we want to encourage you to encourage others. Make sure you share this video link with other people and like and subscribe and do all those things on our social media outlets to make sure that you continually uh, support us. We thank, we're thankful for all of our monthly uh, supporters uh, that are allowing us to keep doing what we're doing. And we're, our plan is to go through the Bible, to, to, to truly understand God's will. We have to know his word. And, uh, and so we're encouraged by each and every one of you guys. Look, we pray God's blessing over you. We want to go ahead and close in prayer and, uh, and send you on your day. So let me close this in prayer. Father, we just thank you again for everyone watching this video, for all those who are part of the Rides family, for all those who are listening to the audio. And we are in the year 2022. Um, literally, this is March 2022. And Father, we thank you that this broadcast is going to go out uh, on the Internet and it'll be there for those who are watching years later. And, and if that's you, we know that you're being blessed and we've set this up just for you. So make sure that you go back. Father, we pray that they go back over all the videos and learn and hear from you. We thank you that you have set this up just for them as a blessing, Father. And we thank you that Every person that watches the videos and listens uh, to the audio doesn't hear us. They hear you through us. It's not about us. It's about you. And we pray that they would arise above their circumstance. That they would arise and stand against evil in this evil day. That they would arise in new power, new faith, and a new revelation of who you are and who they are in you. 
And we give you the glory, honor, and praise for you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless. Have a wonderful day. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue in our Bible study. Uh, Monday through Saturday, we do this 8 a.m. Uh, so we, we want to speak blessings over your life. And, uh, and we thank God for every person that's a part of the Arise family. Um, God bless. Sadi, you have something before we close? No, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, look, Telly, I love hearing your insights. And um, I'm so happy you're with us. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Amen. Amen. That's true. Tell is like our spiritual, uh, she's like part of our family, y'all. It's just I call her my spiritual daughter. She's amazing. Praise God. We love each one of y'all. God bless you. And uh, we will see you tomorrow as we continue.